Moving our bodies is essential to healthy living, but how we move differs from place to place and across cultures. My name is Haley Bone, and I've been dancing since I was three years old. The more I learned about dance, the more curious I became about the power of expressive movement. On this show, we'll highlight some of the various styles of dance and movement that Nova Scotians engage with, from Highland dance to hip hop, circus, and more. We'll also get to see how these expressive movement styles support our communities, as well as their individual emotional and physiological benefits. So come with me as I travel across Nova Scotia to explore the ways we move. I begin my journey in Halifax, Nova Scotia's bustling capital. Not far from the downtown core is Breaking Circus, a contemporary circus production company run by Don Shepard and Ryan Gray. Don is a multidisciplinary aerialist and former elite trainer at the Ecole Nationale du Cirque de Montreal. Ryan is an accomplished drummer, composer, music director, and contemporary circus artist. I chatted with them to discuss the ins and outs of contemporary circus and how they are making waves here in Nova Scotia. I'm so excited to be here today at Breaking Circus to chat with Don and Ryan, two incredibly talented circus artists. I've never been part of a contemporary circus production myself, but I'm really curious to see what this type of movement art is all about. I'm a little bit afraid of heights, so I hope that I don't have to get up off the ground. So what's your story with circus? How did you get into circus? <laughs> okay. Um, I started really late, um, and I was going to like a recreational program here in uh, Halifax, and uh, I had had a government job. I had been wanting to do it for years, but I couldn't. I didn't have like a way to pay for the classes. weren't that cheap, actually. It's quite expensive to take circus. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, anyway, I ended up getting a government job. Once I had my real first job, kind of thing, I was like, I'm going to take circus classes. So okay. I started taking these classes. Eventually, I just kind of decided that I wanted to do like it more professionally, mm -hmm. and I started looking to programs, and the, they were all for people under age 25. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm too old by like a few years. Yeah. Um, it, then I was too old. Now things have changed a lot, but back then it, that was kind of the, the threshold was 25. So I uh, was like, well, maybe I can become a coach. I've got a physiotherapy background, and like maybe I can do that. Ended up going to become a coach at the National Circus School. Went and studied there for three years, and then, and at the time, uh, Ryan and I were in a band. Before that, we were kind of playing in a band together. I was singing, and he was playing drums. Oh. And I was like, I really want to go to Montreal and do circus. And we, how long have we been together? Like a year? A year and a half, maybe. Something like that. And I was like, do, I, do you want to come? Like, <laughs> he was like, Montreal? Yeah, sure. Oh my god! <laughs> I got nothing to do. Let's go. So we went, and yeah, and then. Once I trained at the National Circus School, it like, took me three years because I was working full time for the federal government in mm -hmm. public health. I still had my government job. I, I, they actually put me on assignment and I went there. I, oh, wow. I studied there and I did work for the government and then did that for three years. I did like a compressed work week with the government and then did all my studies. What drew you to this kind of movement, this kind of art? What was it about circus that always really interested you? When I was a kid, I was always climbing things. Like I was oh, always yeah. like climbing things and doing flips, and I, you know, would do handstands in the yard. I'd do cartwheels. I, like, be in the living room doing V sits. Like oh. <laughs> as a six-year-old, like yeah, just you know, yeah. <laughs> doing the. Um, so I already like I already had that physicality. I would stretch in the living room. I always watched all of the aerobic shows. Anything that was physical exercise, like related, I loved. And then I also was really involved in musical theater okay. and singing through church. And so all of those things combined to be like the little human that I was running around, climbing trees and singing and dancing. And my mom was always like prancing around the house. Mm -hmm. um, kind of led me to like, I was drawn to all those things. 
So, Don, when you were training at the National Circus School, Ryan, you were there with Don, but you hadn't gotten into circus yet. Okay, just no. clarifying. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 2012, was that the first time? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, 2012, uh, you needed to do uh, an internship as part of, as my, part of your training. my training. And yeah. we went to South Africa yeah. uh, to work with Zip Zap Circus, which is this amazing, amazing uh, social circus and performance group. Um, mm -hmm. And I started circus down there because one day they had a set of straps hanging and she kept telling me I should do something. And so eventually I, I kept I, telling you you should do straps specifically. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like, he, 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 like in circus, um, he, he has like, he has like small legs. I was like, oh, you'd be make a really great straps artist because it's this discipline that you have to like fling your body around and you're hanging by one arm. Straps artist, um, and it was just funny because I wasn't an active person in, in you know that kind of way. I was a musician most of my life. I loved sitting around playing video games, and um, yeah. And then it just kind of it started with in South Africa, and then you know just kept going. And it was just one of those things where like I'm actually getting better at this, mm. I'm getting better at it. And then you know eventually you just kind of get almost uh, you kind of can't live without it after a while. And so. I'm right. sure it's like that, you know, with, with dance, you know. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Are you still a musician? Yep. Um, so my background before circus was music. I started drums at six. Um, I went to a degree in classical percussion. Oh, wow. And uh, I spent a long time, I want to say trying to be a musician. I was a musician. But it's just like the business side of it, I never quite managed to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened was in Montreal, I started composing for circus artists. Oh. And it just seemed to be working. And so when we came back and started doing our shows, I started, uh, I just kept that up and kept composing. So every show we've done, I have, almost all of them I have composed all the music for. Oh, wow. Um, so it's like, it's my musical outlet. And sometimes I'll work instruments in. I've, I've brought, you know, uh, musician friends and my drums and I've performed in them as a musician. And, um, but that part of me, that part of me just never goes away. came back to Halifax and formed Breaking Circus. Um, so when did that happen and how did it sort of happen? So we officially started the company in 2018. We are essentially Breaking Circus, mm -hmm. um, but you know, we've, over the years, we've brought people in. For our very first show that we ever did, uh, there were three of us. And then the second show we did, uh, the year later, there were five, five of us. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of, we started up just really slowly, like just start trying to do like one show. Let's just do one thing. And then and then eventually started growing. And then we were like, oh, we really need uh, like proper rigging. So we were like, we need to get that skill set. So we actually went back to Montreal in 2018 to both be trained as aerial riggers, which allows us to install and, and, and check and maintain all of our rigging equipment ourselves. Uh, so we did that. And then we were like, okay, we, we have what we need. Let's go back. And then we started installing, like preparing the space. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, it felt like Field of Dreams a little bit to be like corny, but like, it's like if you, you know, if you build it, they'll come kind of thing. I loved hearing about how Don and Ryan became involved in circus and how they created Breaking Circus. I'm so excited to learn more about contemporary circus movement styles and the vision Don and Ryan have for their productions. This week on The Ways We Move, I'm in Halifax visiting Ryan Gray and Don Shepard at their Breaking Circus studio to learn as much as I can about contemporary circus and the movement styles that push the boundaries of what we think is possible. So you mentioned that Breaking Circus is, is really primarily the two of you. It's you as a duo, um, but that, you know, we have these amazing circus artists behind us that are part of your troupe and that you sort of bring people in and you have brought people in in the past who share your vision and, and values. 
Would you like to elaborate a little bit on what that mission and those values are? I think when we started, yeah. mine was actually just, I just want to perform. Right. <laughs> like it was you, you wanted to like, yeah, there's yeah. definitely the more the performance or like have, create art. Yeah. We had that, like as, and for me, there was that, but also there was the thing that I had started so late. And I thought, oh, was, you know, how many people are out there that, you know, have that same experience that, you know, would love to have an, like be able to access it sooner. So for me, that was like another big piece of the thing. I wanted to direct, but there was like that. That was always there for me. You wanted to make it more accessible, like to just people. yeah, so so that other people wouldn't have to start at 28 if they right. didn't, or if they wanted to, that they ha might have help doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it's it's been morphing that vision in terms of like and growing and what does it mean to make service more accessible, and we're we're continually learning what that that means. mentioned sort of traditional circus and contemporary circus. Breaking Circus is a contemporary circus. So sort of what's the, what's the difference and how did contemporary circus really begin in, in Canada and in Nova Scotia? Traditional circus, they tend to think of it as being like, uh, the, like the original circuses that were traveling around with animals. They traveled via train often across the country. Um, you know, they were these it was these amazing things. People were discovering people from other parts of the world. They were discovering the, the oddities and the amazing things from all over the world, you know, that mm. different cultures and different traditions. And they were putting them in a show because they were like, yeah, this is profitable. We can make money off this. And that traditional circus um, had a lot of like, it was spectacle, you know, it was yeah. like, um, a lot of ta-da moments and like, you know, all these like amazing feats you're watching. And, uh, and animals and all of those other things. So your contemporary is like Cirque du Soleil is kind of like, it came up in, within the French uh, Canadian culture and uh, really revolutionized that sort of like contemporary circus. But there was other places um, in Europe as well that were doing similar things around the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure about the interrelationship between those those groups. Right. But, um, so contemporary circus has a narrative. It's not really about, it, there's definitely a spectacle. Oh, okay. Just at the same level or higher probably even now than there were back in the day. But it's about, you know, communicating things as well. Uh, it's beyond just like, you know, uh, glitter and amazing feats like, um, there's a story. There's usually a story, and it's beyond just like you feeling awe. Awe is one part of it, or mm -hmm. wonder, but it may be so many other things that you may also feel because of there's a narrative that's being, um, you know, a dramaturgy to the whole thing. You so know. contemporary circus sort of started with Cirque du Soleil in, in Canada. Um, I think in Canada, yes. yes. I, I, outside of Canada, I can't I think it speak was to that. Into the late '60s, when yeah. the, that sort of term kind of started hitting but yeah, then it got picked up when Cirque came in and, and really became like this entity of, of, mm -hmm. a, of a style of a, of a way of being. Something I'm curious about are the elements of contemporary circus. Ryan, you mentioned that you're a straps artist, and I think, Dawn, you mentioned that you're an aerial artist. What sort of elements could audiences or spectators expect from, but I, from a contemporary circus? But like Ryan, you also mentioned clowning, and, and so what are these sort of elements that make up contemporary circus? I mean, nowadays, um, yeah, I think there's some things that people tend to expect with contemporary circus, if they know you know enough about it, and like aerials, definitely people flying around, um, and then you know there's always a clown, you know there's always uh, uh, acrobats, you know juggling. I think those are kind of like the four sort of main staples. Some sort of manipulation, someone flying around. So aerial, clown, acrobats, juggling. Yeah, and then there's variations off of that, like sure. you know, there's hand balancers, there's a uh, newer stuff like the sear wheel. 
mm -hmm. which is a giant metal wheel that people s spin around on the floor. And yeah. right. Hand to hand, uh, also. Hand to hand. hand to hand is a very, like, hand to hand is like working with another person mm -hmm. and balancing. Like, so mm -hmm. that's very, very common. But a lot um, of times you also get um, just people trying weird new stuff. There's, a, you know, people throw things together and be like, Let's see if this works, mm -hmm. and then they end up. You know, a lot of a lot of newer uh, shows and companies will do. They will make an effort to find something that just hasn't been done before in a way. Um, but as for the staples, as for you know the base elements, I think those kind of. Yeah, there, there, there's our companies though creating new disciplines as well. So like things that people haven't seen before that mm -hmm. are like a little like combinations of things. Also like. Uh, older traditional circus arts are coming back and being done in ways that are kind of innovative. So like uh, hair pull, like people hanging by their hair is coming back. Oh. Uh, people hanging by their jaw. jaw. I, I actually have one, uh, like the iron jaw, you hang by your mouth. I see a lot more um, uh, ac yeah. acrobatics on, on tight wire. Because okay. traditional tight wire. You oh, know, tight wire is a big one too. Yeah, you traditional tight that, wire yeah. is a lot of, you know, running and walking and pirouettes and, um, there's there's one artist that's out right now. Um, does these amazing does like a back handspring to, to a catch on a tight wire and you're just wow mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's 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 all about. <laughs> there's a lot of pushing the boundary, uh, pushing pushing that where that bar is. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of what circus is about, though. It's kind of about that. You know, what is the boundary of, of the human imagination and the human physicality, like? Mm -hmm. How do those two things converge, and how do you, you know, what can you, what can you share with those two things coming together? It's so interesting to learn that circus artists are always looking for new ways to invigorate their performances, even by bringing back some of the more traditional circus styles. I can't wait to try it myself, as long as they don't expect me to hang from my hair. I've started my journey of exploring the ways we move in Halifax speaking with Don Shepard and Ryan Gray of Breaking Circus. They have taught me a lot about circus movement styles and how they've evolved over the years. So what is contemporary circus's connection to other art forms? That's a really good question. I'm, I think uh, it has elements of many different art forms in it. So uh, it crosses across theater, mm -hmm. it has a narrative like theater, mm -hmm. so you might think of it, a lot, of, a lot of contemporary circus directors were theater directors at first, and then we're like, oh, I can do this for, for circus, so there's that. Then there's dance, because there's that movement knowledge that, that, mm. that crosses over, you know, mm -hmm. it's a movement discipline like dance, so that also crosses over. Uh, visual arts is extremely visual circus art, so when you combine that with visual artists and the new technology, projection, and all these other things that are out. Um, and a lot of the um, more modern artists will train all the other art forms. Mm -hmm. um, at the National Circus School, they, they have to do dance, they have to do music, they have to do... Voice. Voice. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, clowning. Mm -hmm. uh, so juggling, on top of their acro, juggling, yeah. they're really, really well-rounded, like in terms of, uh, they have to have all of those skills, you know. Mm -hmm. Since there's so much overlap with contemporary circus and other performance styles, are there other, broader terms besides dancer that can be used to include other movement artists? We have shifters. That's a, that's a newer sort of term that's come around of, it's kind of like acro dance, but more towards the acro than the dance. Sure. So a lot of soft entry. Um, changing direction. Changing direction. Like, like just, so just, yeah, it's, I mean, it's all movement. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, we'd like to put things in boxes, I think. Mm. I, I hear a lot of today, too, people saying dance makers, which I really like that mm. as a, I'm a dance maker as opposed to a dancer. I, right. And I really like that um, as, a, as an idea. Um, yes, and I yeah. also hear a lot of today um, interdisciplinary. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know, interdisciplinary artist mm -hmm. or it's an interdisciplinary piece or interdisciplinary program and mm -hmm. so I feel people like, like performing artist also is another thing that people they don't want to box themselves in has breaking circus done any sort of circus on film? 
Dur well, during the we're, pandemic, we're we did. Currently working. Currently on working on one, <laughs> and we did like a, a little, a small documentary as well. Oh, that's true. Um, okay. And uh, our, our for, like one of my former acts, we did, I, we redid it, and put it on, like did a circus on film, like a short. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're working on, a, a hopefully, a feature, like the way that we have it planned, a feature film, uh, which is uh, circus on film. Um, Will it follow the narrative of of a circus show? The feature film, or is it more of like a peek behind the curtain? It's it's kind of a. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a, it's there's okay. there's narrative. <laughs> there's you know a story. It's very. Yeah. It's almost B movie in a way with the story, but uh, and then it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's these moments of suspension of disbelief because you suddenly have a circus act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a silent but it, film, but it's like it feels like a movie, like that you would watch. And then the circus serves this purpose in it of of for whichever character is doing it, mm -hmm. you know, so you might have, it, it, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to give yeah, anything, don't give anything, don't give anything away, but, but basically like, it's not like, a, it's not like, uh, like a lot of circus on films we've seen or like that have been around, they're set like you know, under a big top or they're set in a circus setting. So yeah, of course, like, you know, but this is not a circus setting. Okay. So it, uh, it feels very different. And then the pieces that are being formed are also, uh, even though they're circus apparatus, the setting is the setting of what like, would be a naturally occurring in a film. Okay. Like, uh, so yeah. it's it's a little bit like believable it's unbelievability. Kind of, oh, kind of wow. like if your your daily life all of a sudden had like this interspersive of like Oh uh, yeah, that sounds really circus interesting. magic in it. And when is that uh -huh. going to be available? Do we or know yet? <laughs> we're uh, in February end of February okay. um, 2023. Okay. That's when we're hoping to like be able to re like release it to uh, a major festival. We're not sure which one yet, but wow. we're hoping that it will be ready and edited and ready to go from, by then. It is being um, supported by uh, the National Film Board, oh, the wow. FAP program, so that's really helpful to us and uh, and the Canada Council for the Arts. So um, there's kind of, we have two, and then also our company is also um, putting money forward to and actually, uh, our production company. dancer background, we do have a little help from Live Art Dance on this one. Oh, we do. Oh. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Today was amazing. I had so much fun talking with Don and Ryan of Breaking Circus about contemporary circus and the work that they do. Here at Breaking Circus, they're really blurring the lines between art, theater, and movement. I can't wait to see where the rest of this journey takes me. Come with me and explore the ways we move.